Community Connections CBMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrate local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Community Connections Happy Monday, Waterloo Region. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. Today we have in the studio Dave from Loontown, and we'll be chatting with him in just a little bit. For now, we're going to be listening to Nomenclature from their album Slow Space. Sad wet eyes Reach out to hold you But you pulled away You wanted something different But you wouldn't say Tell me what you need And we'll be just fine We can have it all But I can't read your mind Loontown from the new album Slow Space called Nomenclature. My name is Bob Jonkman. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections here on CKMS 102.7. Honored to have in the studio today Dave Thanks from for having Loontown. Me. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. you traveled a bit to get here today, didn't you? Um, I didn't travel too, too much. I'm, I'm from, uh, from Kitchener, so I had a very short drive on my way here, but... Um, yeah, I was at Pearson Airport last late last night picking up bandmates and uh, uh, who were flying the ones in. Who were traveling in for a while. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So introduce your bandmates. Who, who's coming in and who's coming in from where? Um, Danielle Savage is um, coming in from Penticton, BC, and um, she is she plays guitar, and 
bass on a couple of tracks. And Nick Hyatt uh, lives in Whitehorse. And Nick and I went to school in Western, actually, um, for music. And uh, Nick is, yeah, he, uh, Nick and I have been collaborating for a long time. Yeah, so that's who's here today. And then, so tonight we're going to have, we're going to be joined by Millie Hong coming in from Montreal. Wow. Yeah. Scattered all over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so if you're scattered all over, how do you manage to have a band? Yes, the perennial question or the, <laughs> the million dollar question. Um, we met in Montreal and, um, and that's how we came to be. And then before the pandemic, we all moved to different places. Um, but we had, we got a grant with a previous band that Millie, Nick and I were in called Future States. And um, so we still, we had this money to write music and um, so we did, and we invited Danielle on the show or uh, on uh, onto the recording project, and um, and it was a really natural fit. So um, we were just really motivated by that chemistry, I guess, and um, and we figured it out. We just uh, we found software that we could use. Um, we we use Ableton to write tracks or okay. send demos back and there forth. You know. And um, and that's how we do it. Then we get together to kind of flesh ideas out more in person and then record them. Uh, and yeah. Then you get together by flying across the country. To that's do right. Performances. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, this mic is a bit uh, hot or something. Yeah, I don't think it's the mic. I think it's okay. something else in here someplace. So yeah. You may have to switch mics sure. uh, in a bit. Yeah. All right, so that's, that's your band. And you've flown in, obviously, for a performance. Yep. And that's happening when and where. So we have a set of shows coming up this week. On Thursday, we're in Toronto at the Cameron House. Um, and on Friday, we're here in this very building, in fact, um, <laughs> uh, at Sephora Katana's studios. Um, so she's on the second floor. Um, this is, what is it, 280? Yeah, 283 Duke Street, Duke Duke West and Kitchener. It's yeah. the Beamer Box building. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so we're playing upstairs. And... Um, on Saturday, we're heading to Ottawa to play at Happy Goat Cafe, the Laurel Street location. And then on Sunday, we're headed to Montreal to play at uh, one of our favorite places, uh, Casa del Popolo. So, uh -huh. yeah. And then everybody scatters back across the country. Then Millie is, I think, joining another project and going on tour with them, Pony Girl. You should check them out as well. Uh -huh. um, and... Uh, we are doing a little more playing and writing together and then um, playing a show in Sarnia on 19th and then everybody flies home and then I follow them to BC and we play a few short shows out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is your first tour in years. That's right. Yeah. yeah because pandemic. Yes, yeah. because pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah. It uh, definitely feels a little bit nerve-wracking to be back on the doing live performance, but uh, um, yeah, we're very excited. It's It's been sorely missed, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a new album coming out as well, and I guess you're, that's what the tour is for, is to that's promote right. the new album, yep. which we have just received yes. know, as, uh, as files for a digital library this morning, so unfortunately I can't play you the many of uh, the tunes from there, but I'll they'll play to us from there. That's right, yeah. yeah. We released four singles um, already, and... Uh, those are probably the ones you have. Yeah. And actually, the full album dropped on November 4th, so that's ah, accessible okay. online. Yeah. All right. So we will access that, stick it in our library, and, and play lots of those things. And I think I'm going to play one of those now. Um, retrospective, you think that's a good one to, to go I'm going to play that one later live. Oh, okay. So maybe... Um, well, we can do some musicology and, and comparative uh, analysis <laughs> of, of <laughs> sure. this. Sure. <laughs> sure, yeah. Let's, put, let's compare the original and the live version. Okay. So here's Retrospective from Loon Town, um, starring Dave. In the town where you fell into that existential now shackled to the stone of memory 
Coming home feels like drawing in the sand as the tide rises and mirrors only show you the smoke. Inhale while you're stuck in. Retrospective by Nomenclature. We have Dave, oh sorry, Retrospective by Boomtown. Nomenclature was the song we played earlier. And we've got Dave in the studio here. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. So I think we fixed the problem with the crackling, but now we have a hum. So I'm not oh. sure that this is any Six better. Nice. Yeah. This um, is probably... Uh, this is actually far worse than it was before. <laughs> let's just see what else we can tell you about. All right. So that was nice, laid-back music. I enjoy that. It's uh, listed in our digital library as synth pop. Nice. Is that mm -hmm. approximately correct? Yeah, it's a bit of a tough record, actually, to put into a genre category. There's a lot of different genres represented, so um, I understand the struggle. <laughs> um, I think we qualify or we see ourselves as edging towards synth pop primarily because um, there's synth in almost every track. And um, it's not, um, I think synth rock would imply something a little heavier. Um, okay. And uh, so we, we, yeah. Because the, the first album, Exit Strategy, is mm. listed here as synth rock, and in fact, psych synth rock. Okay, yeah, so. that's probably more accurate. The previous project that Nick and Millie and I were in was called, was called Future States, and that was a solidly, a, a band that was pretty solidly in the psych rock um, genre. And so because there was some sort of overlap um, between that band and this band, um, I think that record is a little more in that genre. Okay. Yeah, a lot more guitar, uh, heavy guitars, and uh, like kind of um, I don't know how to describe 
a little a busier drum beats maybe okay. and yeah okay so you've, and you've got so you've got on stage for your on uh, live performances yeah you must have a synth yeah guitar bass drums that's it okay yeah. that's Good traditional setup. Exactly. So. It's a winning formula. Yeah. 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 And uh, you, you've got an acoustic guitar here. Which yes. Somehow doesn't quite seem to fit the, uh, <laughs> the genre. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I think uh, that's kind of the magic of songwriting is that you write something on uh, and you don't have a full band. Often, I mean, especially in this case, we didn't have a full band all, you know, all the time. Uh, in future states, we would rehearse weekly, and so it was easier to kind of write for the band. Um, and um, because of the nature of this project, uh, we were we had to kind of write on our own and send things back and forth. Um, so we really had to focus on just uh, the the, st the kind of core elements of the song, um, which I think the piano or the guitar lends itself really well to. Um, right. And so I wrote a lot of the songs on that I wrote um, uh, on this record, or the parts of the songs that I wrote on this record on this on this guitar. On that guitar there. And um, a unique feature of our band is that a lot of people, uh, a lot of us, are songwriters. So um, Nick and Danny and I uh, all write songs, and um, we kind of made it a goal for this project to to try collective songwriting. So. Um, sending things back and forth and not uh, being afraid to um, let people go wild with our ideas. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And so you're composing, you're composing on guitar? For the most part, yeah. I studied piano, and so sometimes I gravitate to the piano to figure out harmonies and things like that. Um, okay. But, um, yeah, the guitar uh, is, it just, I, I can find, in, I think maybe it's because it's, very visual for me playing guitar and I think I find it easier to to experiment and find interesting chords really you know yeah okay. as opposed to on the piano you really have to pick every note but sometimes you accidentally play a note on the guitar or there's an open string or something and you're like oh I like the sound of that so ah, so composing is sometimes accidental at, I would say <laughs> <laughs> for me anyways it's almost always accidental in some to some degree right. so not being a musician I thought this was a very deliberative process you know? <laughs> yeah years of study I mean the study is exposure to what's possible and having developing your ear maybe um but I think in my like the way that I compose anyways it's not it's not it's not very calculated um it's kind of it leaves a lot to to chance and a lot to kind of um to, I like improvising a lot, so um, right. yeah, I'm not sitting in my room composing an entire thing in my head and then writing it down. <laughs> yeah. well, it's an incremental process. Yeah, you know? for sure. Uh, think a little bit, write a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then play a little bit on the guitar to make sure that it works out. Yeah, or play um, something, and then when you hear something that you like, make sure you remember it and take yeah. a lot of notes and yeah, uh, yeah. come back to it later. Yeah. And then when you're introducing it to the band, do you have it all written out for them, you know, note for note? No, I mean, for the most part, it, we send audio clips back and forth. Ah, okay. And then um, if it requires kind of digging deeper into like what's actually going on here, then we'll kind of like deconstruct what's happening. And if somebody is like, OK, but is this this chord or this chord, then then we'll kind of set it in stone. But um, yeah, uh, it's often interesting to, to just let some I think actually one of the songs I'm going to play is called Prairie Desert, and uh, it's from Exit Strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and Nick came up with the chords for this, and I don't think Nick knew all of the chord. Like, Nick could have f sat down and figured out how to what to call every chord, but I think just playing a series of notes on the piano uh, in a certain order um, was enough. Like, it's sometimes not necessary to name them, so... Um, and sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to name them. Like you have, you're playing notes that don't really fit into chords. So you're just playing something uh, that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even know that was possible. I mm -hmm. thought you could only play, you know, the, the, the chords that had been approved by the you know, <laughs> International Music Determination Society. Well, you will get a fine. <laughs> but luckily the Jazz Society will have your back. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. And, and is, is, is Jazz, is that a direction that... No, yeah, no, no. Away, I'm so. I, I kid. Okay. Um, I would love to have studied jazz. Actually, I think it's. Yeah. I, I really like. 
You mentioned improvisation earlier, right? So that's yeah, uh, jazz is is you know half improvisation at, at least. Yeah, at least. Um, yeah, it's definitely improv is something that Nick and I especially really love, and Millie. Millie is a jazz musician yeah. um, by by trade, actually, okay. and uh, it shows. She's really awesome. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. And, and what happens now when you're doing the performing? Is there any um, improvisation happening there, or is it all? as you had practiced it and you know i would love to incorporate some uh we'll just have to see how we this this tour will be like the first time that we play live as a band ever so um we'll really have to kind of hone and just just make some of these decisions as we go um so so even pre-pandemic you weren't playing together no oh nick and millie and i have played together you know many many times but as a four piece we've never oh, played together i didn't live. realize that yeah. i thought that you know we're just on hiatus during the last two no, three years yeah even yeah pre-pandemic we we started the band we actually released exit strategy march of 2020 and we were going to go on tour there and and then we didn't go on tour oh. and uh so yeah this will be it'll we're kind of making it up as we go okay it sounds yeah. all very exciting it is very exciting yeah, yeah. thanks yeah. you have something for us sure um I'll play, um, yeah, maybe I'll play, maybe I'll play Prairie Deserts just since I mentioned it, and um, and then maybe I'll play something from the, re- the new record. This okay. one's from uh, Exit Strategy. Pull this mic. Got so many mics now, I don't know what to do with them all. Microphones bashing into each other. I'm like so. a press, some sort of. <laughs> Superstar. <sighs> Dirty hands keep digging, though there's there's death at the bottom. Hungry eyes can't feed us if there's nothing left to eat. It's getting harder to get out of bed How can I cure this sense of daily dread Burning through the Sunday paper with a magnifying glass Why does the bad news always light up so fast? Sneaking suspicion I'm jealous of my friends Look where the time goes Look where the time goes As though we're we're breaking the silence Chattering teeth should tell us What the temperature is In what kind of heaven Is that enough? What would we be doing? Talk, burning through the Sunday paper with the magnifying glass. Why does the bad news always light up so fast? Sneaking suspicion, I'm jealous of my friends. Look where the time goes Look where the time goes Dave from Loontown, <laughs> live in the studio on CKMS Community Connections. Big shout out to Sarah Cave, who's just told me that they're watching now. So. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> yes. Having a, a bit of trouble here with um, cameras and microphones and, and uh, you know, just technical things. All good. But uh, 
That's what live radio is all about. So that's yeah. the live performance aspect. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Sounded very different from the way that it did on the album. For sure. Yeah, there's a lot more. It's funkier on the album. Um, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, faster maybe on the album. Yeah, Think? maybe. I often have a tendency to play faster live, so maybe that would be an improvement for me, actually, if it was, oh. <laughs> if it was slower. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's just my perception. You know, I'm a yeah. little bit pumped to, uh, here to have you know, a live performance in the studio. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting guitar you've got there. It's uh, not metal strings, is it? No, this is a nylon string guitar um, that was actually gifted to me by my sister-in-law, Annette, and... Uh, yeah, she wasn't playing it and, I, and was like, do you want this guitar? I was like, well, yeah, I'll play this guitar. <laughs> I didn't have a nylon string. So um, nylon strings are, have a much softer sound than, um, than steel strings. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just easier to play. And I think when you're writing songs on your couch or in your living room, you don't want to um, have to deal with steel strings all the time and, and produce so much sound. So, um, yeah, maybe that's writing on this, uh, writing on any instrument definitely yeah. influences what you're writing. So it's possible. It uh, looks like it's a well-loved guitar. It's got definitely, some yeah. on the fretboard. I'm not sure there. if I'm responsible for all of that, but definitely a good chunk of it. Yeah. yeah. Does that affect the playing? If, if it starts wearing down? Does, uh, you know, I mean, I like to think that it only improves things. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I just changed the strings for the first time. Uh, like last month, and it definitely affected. Uh, it sounds better. <laughs> oh, be. good, good. <laughs> yeah, good. Because sometimes you you build up a sound, and uh, you know you make a, a change allegedly for the better. Yes, and that can uh, happen. If you're not happy with how it comes out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. In this case, it was just good uh, affecting the brightness, and it's nice to have some brightness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, you said the others are are composing as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and do they compose on guitar or piano or synth? Um, yeah, Danny plays guitar and has played in uh, bands for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, fronted her own band called Danielle Savage and the Miscreants or the some <laughs> no, something like that. Danielle, anyway, a folk anything with Miscreants in, in the name is, is got to be good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Something like that. Sorry, Danielle, I don't remember. But um, it'll be a trivia fact on the next quiz. Um, and uh, Nick, I think, primarily composes on keyboards. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Nick and I both study piano at university. But um, um, yeah, Nick is a better pianist than I am. <laughs> so Nick is better at composing on the... Yeah. On, and actually plays synth, I think, uh, while we were um, playing in Future States. Okay. Nick picked up a lot of synth skills. Yeah. I have to tell you, I can't... You're a cohesive band because I can't tell difference in, in composition style from one track to the next. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you mix all the colors together, make brown. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, it's been a really fun process to kind of really, to let everyone have a voice in every song. And I mm -hmm. think um, we're just starting to define, you know, what, uh, what our sound is. And, uh, but I think we've we're onto something, so. Okay. Will you be doing some uh, group composition work now that you're all together again? Yeah, for sure. It's a rare occurrence, obviously. Yeah. Um, we don't get together that often. So next week, we're going to be shooting a music video um, in okay. Montreal and then coming back to Kitchener to do some writing. So. Music videos, too. Cool. Yeah. Cool. You got to do it all at once when yeah. you're together. Yeah. So, yeah. You have a producer for that? Uh, yes. Um, Kristen. Ooh, Kristen. What is her last <laughs> name? Again, the trivia quiz. Kristen Brown. I want to say brown, but that's, that's, I mean, I'll look it okay. up all okay. during the next okay. song. Anyway, she's fantastic and has been putting in so many hours and so much work. Um, we're really grateful that okay. she's, yeah. Is there any one nice. song that you're going to be putting on the video or just doing a... We're going to do um, Silver Flowers, actually, uh, okay. for the video. And that's exciting. That's on the new record. I don't, yeah. so you probably don't have don't that Don't have yet. that yet. Sadly. Um, <laughs> you'll just have to wait or go online and check it out. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's one of the more kind of upbeat oh i hate that word but uh one of the and en more energetic and complicated arrangements okay. on the album yeah, yeah. so um yeah i'm a music teacher actually and whenever i ask students to describe music they always say it's upbeat but it actually yeah. usually describes a to z like it could mean reggae it could mean uh, you know like a sad song yeah. <laughs> upbeat is a very what, what level of music do you teach i teach high school high school yeah Okay. Shout out to St. Mary's folks. Ah, okay, that's, that's walking distance. Huh. Almost, yeah. Well, not so much now, but it used to be downtown. That's right. 
so oh St. Mary's oh St. Mary's is way out by it's um block line and, yeah, yeah block line now okay right. actually I knew that actually but I still think of St. Mary's as you know the the, the old, Saint old Mary's. yeah the old St. Mary's yeah. downtown like where the uh, community center is now yeah legendary yeah yeah, yeah. yeah cool mm-hmm. oh, what's it like teaching music is, uh, are you teaching the same things that you're practicing as you're composing and, and performing I do my best yeah I mean I think it's definitely a benefit or like helps it helps my work a lot because uh um I think when you're without producing your own music, it's difficult to know what the what it's like um, to to do it. And um, sometimes I find when uh, instructors are teaching what they learned um, in school, it kind of lacks some context. Um, and sometimes it's it becomes kind of driven by the instructor and. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You can get a lot out of that type of program, but I'm interested in, in hearing the voice of the students. Um, and so uh, I do my best to kind yeah. of impart the compositional wisdom, the okay. idea that, you know, you don't have to wait for me to tell you what to do. You can go go for it, like write some songs. Right. And so it's composition you're teaching, not just performance. Yeah, yeah. I teach uh, actually a course called Com- Music and Computers. And um, so... Oh, I d- man! <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of cool things. Um, uh, we're using Ableton um, to compose and make beats, uh-huh. and uh, some people are doing like like house music, um, some electroacoustic sort of stuff, and recording. And yeah, so you've got a recording studio at the school, and I would love to have a formal com- recording studio, but we have a computer lab um, okay. which has uh, yeah um, recording software on it on all the computers, and so. Uh, we're, yeah, we're composing. It's, it's primarily composition. That we're Can't be any messier than the studio in here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very familiar environment, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> As a result, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Mess is, is to me, the it indicates creativity of some kind. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and have the students put something together that's available for us to put on the air? Good question. Um, we do have a SoundCloud page, um, and... A number of students have, have like their final compositions are up there. Um, I'll have to send you the link. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, if uh, any of the students are interested in having their music on the radio, all right, you know, send it our way. Because we love local on. talent and local music. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. That actually goes for anybody. Anybody out who's out there listening, and uh, yeah. you've you've got some music to share. You know, send it to office at radiowaterloo.ca, and eventually I will dig down to the bottom of my inbox and and get to it. Uh, I've I've got a list as long as my arm. And, uh, you know, there's a, a big new music show coming up at some point because, you know, I've got a whole summer's worth of stuff to catch up on. Excellent. Well, yeah. that's really great to hear. I think it's so important that people have an outlet for, like, for people to listen to their music that isn't corporate radio. And, yeah. um, you know, I think the, those are few and far between now. So, yeah. 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 You've just opened up a whole new channel of, of music access that I wasn't even thinking of earlier. And there's already so much talent and music being uh, produced here in Kitchener-Waterloo. There really is. Yeah, I've been impressed. Yeah. The townships, it's, you know, we could play probably local music 24 hours a day. Yeah. And, you know, uh, still not repeat ourselves. Yeah, I would love to see a day where, you know, people know, like, who's playing music in their neighborhood and uh, knows the, the lyrics to their songs and... Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's a future I want to be a part of for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think I don't know that there's any one online location that gathers all the local music stuff together. That would be you know, a great. Somebody who's willing to take on, uh, I think, what is going to be a fair bit of work to do that. Yeah, there's uh, um, Radio City or Uptown Radio or something. Midtown Radio. Midtown Radio. Yeah, yeah. Midtown Radio. Um, friends of ours. Uh, oh, good. We're not we're not, we're not in competition. You know, it's. Uh, there's we're, more than enough to go around. Yeah. Well, Kitchen Water Doing Cambridge is we're just saturated with radio stations, really rich in, in on air broadcast stuff. I mean, aside from all the commercial stations, we've got CGIQ from Conestoga College, which is their training station, and CKWR, the older sister station to CKMS. Uh, they started off as the University of uh, Waterloo campus station way back in the 1970s. And awesome. I think we're the very first. Um, independent community radio on the air in Canada. Really? Yeah. Wow. What a F- FM what a radio on the air. Honor I think to there be some, here. <laughs> some AM stuff first. CKMS is the offshoot of that. Mm. Uh, we used to be affiliated with the uh, University of Waterloo, but 
um, parted ways a few years back and now we're an independent community station but that's you know two on-air broadcast community stations uh, a campus station from uh, CGIQ and then Midtown Radio as well uh, we're just swimming in it it's wonderful it's fantastic yeah, yeah. that's yeah. great all right um you have time for another one Absolutely. Yeah, we, have, we have time for another one yeah yeah you tell me but yeah okay we have Absolutely. time for another one I, I have time for sure <laughs> if you have time I have time um, let's see. I'll play one that relates to teaching. Um, this one is kind of about, so I taught during the pandemic, I taught, uh, I taught drama for the first time ever and, um, not a spectacular drama person, but, uh, grade nine drama is all about just like not overthinking things and, uh, just realizing that you can, if you own it, you can look like a fool and people won't judge you forever you know um and it's an interesting it was a really fun interesting class to teach and uh, this song is sort of about um that process of um getting out of your head a little bit um and maybe being a little overconfident at times um there's a fantastic guitar solo uh, on this on the record um that our producer um and engineer encouraged me to record, even though I don't really do guitar solos, but <laughs> they turned up the gain on this Fender Princeton and uh, turned all, what was it? Turned down, turned up the mids and turned down the bass and treble. And it's just a screaming kind of classic electric guitar solo. But from someone who doesn't really do guitar solos and you can hear that, it makes me laugh every time um, because it's so ridiculous. But um, this song is called Old Songs About Important Things. Um. Sitting in a circle. Oh, wrong key. Sitting in a circle. They're calling out names. Illusions of grandeur. Fantasies of fame. Oh, how long a list of things. They don't want you to know Tell me how it feels To star in your own show You said I don't need anything No, I'm even immune to infection Tell me where to go And I'll take you in another direction I don't need anyone But I'm hoping that you won't mention The best thing I'm figuring out Is to pay me no attention now you're in the middle now they're calling you the thrill of the moment things like terror too string of words come out but none of them are true you said tell me how it feels to be a boogaloo you said i don't need anyone but i'm hoping you don't mention this is what happens on live radio we're going to do this again i don't need anything but an immune to infection i don't need anyone but i'm hoping that you won't mention the best way to figure me out is to pay me no attention One day you will find a way Form the words your mind won't let you say A bell will ring and it will all be fear And you will finally admit your greatest fear and this is what you'll say oh and i hope you see right through me through this terrible facade i hope you see i'm nervous i don't want to lose my control oh and i hope to god that this won't mean that we're gonna lose the war you don't want to lose your crown But if you keep it, we'll all drown So won't you please, won't you please just put it down Dave from Loontown Seems a little bit 
um, autobiographical there. It's, uh, <laughs> the idea of, of grabbing what you want and you know, going with it. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's in there for sure. I definitely didn't have myself in mind, but um, um, I think it's a theme that kind of everyone can, can relate to this idea that, uh, you know, you're kind of operating in the world with a bit of a shell and hoping that people won't see what's actually going on. Um, maybe acting a little more confident than you, than you feel into, at times. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a fun song. Uh, it's very much a, and the chords are very simple. Like it kind of yeah. is, is straight to the point. Yeah. yeah, straight to the point. Very good. So being a teacher in today's environment. Uh oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. This, this, <laughs> is, this is the political segment of uh, CKMS right. Community Connections. Yes. Um, what's happening in the world of education today? Well, um, kids are not in school today in some, some school boards, as many of you will know. Um, yeah, I, um, I feel a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of things about what's going on right now. Um, it feels really sad that the, that the government is not um, able to see the, the humanity of the people that are asking for a raise. And it seems like all they really care about is the dollar value. And, yeah. um, and this isn't the teachers themselves. This no, is the educational yeah. assistants, the janitors, the That's secretaries, right. the uh, yeah. administrative yeah. staff. Yeah. And I think that also feels hard because as teachers, you expect to be picked on a little bit. Like you get paid well and, and unions over the years have, have really negotiated hard for, uh, for well, like a decent salary. Um, but over the years, QP employees haven't had the same deal. And so this feels really like picking on the little guy. Um, mm -hmm. These aren't people that are millionaires. They're not people that are asking for too much, you know? And right. so for the government to kind of... Um, couch their their very reasonable d demand or request to be paid a living wage as you know a 50 percent increase it seems really disingenuous and it, and it it's yeah it's really it's disappointing yeah. and, and worse than that the government has stripped away bargaining rights uh, right to strike yeah um, and that's... and in fact has said that you know human rights don't matter here yeah that's it's, the scary thing yeah yeah that's not only are they missing the whole point of bargaining of collective bargaining which is that you know we balance the needs of the workers with the needs of the the state um that um mm -hmm. that it's that that now not only that uh, are they l missing that point but they're missing the whole point of democracy which is that we elect people they have to to kind of protect the rights of people not over, yeah, overturn yeah. the rights. You would think that yeah. the purpose of government is to look after the needs of, of yeah. the citizens. Well, and, and, and that's why it's frustrating because the government will, will portray these workers as not the citizens. Like they're some sort of outside of, they're not yeah. the people. Yeah. Like the people are over here. These are not the people. Othering. They're, yeah. They're, they're making them the other. You <laughs> yeah, exactly. Know? And yeah. It's yeah. divide and conquer, I suppose. But Absolutely. And sadly, there's a, a majority in the uh, legislature so that yeah they can yeah. pretty much tromp on anything that they feel like without any opposition being powerful enough to stop them in, yeah in parliament or in in um the ontario legislature anyway yeah it feels definitely like a, an abuse of power a fun fact is that i actually sat on um the university student council with the uh, education minister stephen lecce oh. <laughs> and uh so I was, uh, I at the time knew that he was going to be a career politician for sure. Like, really? It was just obvious. And um, I, so I'm not surprised that he is where he is. Um, but uh, yeah, I think at the time I was, I was, I admired in him the kind of like um, being careful about spending people's money. Like, cause at the time it was about tuition hikes and um, yep. making sure that the fees that students pay are, um, worthwhile like what are we buying for those for that money and is it worthwhile and i was like oh yeah, yeah we should think about those things but um yeah uh, it's disappointing to see like that being taken to this extreme yeah yeah and do you think it'll end well uh i, I mean predicting the future is always hard especially tough. when it comes to politics one thing that i 
have been surprised by about the government is their ability or their willingness to completely do a 180 on a thing that they've said. So that is true. Over yeah. like in the pandemic, they said, well, we're, we're really hard on this issue. And then when people make noise, it, see, it does seem like they're not afraid to just completely go back on that. So I'm really hoping that this is one of those yeah. situations. You know, there's some protests happening here in Waterloo yeah. region today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw some online um, stuff happening. Yeah. Uh, today being Monday, the 7th of uh, November. Uh, for those people listening in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we should all be out there. Yeah. yeah. Go out and, and show your support, your solidarity with the um, education workers. Education workers. Yeah. And uh, you know, show them that they have the right to exist as citizens and yeah, worth a living wage. Decent wage. wage you know? yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Is protest music in Loontown? Um, I don't know if I would call it protest music. I think there needs to be some sort of chantable chorus. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> if it's to be called protest music. So I wouldn't say that, but I definitely think that it is not. I mean, nothing is apolitical, but certainly we're all politically engaged people in the band. And, um, yeah, we comment about the state of the world and, and, um, and, uh, it's difficult to avoid having feelings about what's going on in the world. Oh, absolutely. For, yeah. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like it's, it's so overwhelming. It's, it's coming at us from all sides. You know, the environment is, is being gutted. Yeah. Uh, municipal planning, uh, municipal plans are, are being gutted as well. You know? Yeah, There's, exactly. Like our local like we're the people who live here you know yeah so it definitely has felt like uh there's some powerlessness you know and this is i don't know uh making music is definitely a way to kind of recapture some of that power and yeah. uh, just put something out there that's that is your own and says at least something that people can hear yeah yeah and then we're going to chantable chorus and then uh <laughs> yeah then we'll <laughs> we'll be on the streets no yeah, time absolutely yeah. So, um, recap of, of that, actually. Um, you aren't on the streets, but you are performing locally. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to give a quick recap of that. Again. Yeah, sure. So, on Thursday, we're in Toronto at the Cameron House, uh, the back room, and we're playing with... Uh, um, and in Kitchener, we're, we're playing here in this building, the mm -hmm. 283 Duke Street. Duke West. Street. Yeah. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> um, at Katana Studios upstairs. Um, and we're playing with our good friend, Andrew Patton, um, who's playing as Dangerous Ace. He's got some new tunes coming out. Uh, he's wow. from Toronto. And in Kitchener, we're playing with Sam Tudor as well. And uh, we are playing with Gamekeeper in Toronto, who is a friend of Andrew's. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice to get your friends together and play a show. It's, yeah. it's going to be a really fun yeah. time. We'll have that on the, um, on the show notes for today's show. Yeah. And then uh, get that out in, in a day or so. Awesome. That'd be and great. then uh, be able to hype it up for the next yes. week. Yes, absolutely. And check it out. There's a Facebook event and an event bright. Um, if you just Google search um, Loontown shows or uh, visit our website, this is Loontown.com. Um, there's you'll see our amazing website, um, which was put together by David Desaro and um, our friend Liam Brown. Um, it's a gorgeous piece of work. Um, you should definitely yeah. have a look. It's, uh, it's a, Davide is an Italian animator, and we were like, can you do a small, like, make a map for Ludtown? And he came back with this, and we were just floored. It's yeah. just so gorgeous. It's uh, uh, an island floating in outer space um, yeah. with, it looks like a, a head that's submerged uh, in the island with water flowing out as hair streams going yeah. uh, through the island. And uh, It's really very pretty. Uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. thanks. I, we're yeah. so grateful for for him for doing that work and uh, you can play the whole album on the website if you click around all the icons so it's a fun way to, to oh the icons are music yeah so you oh can, my goodness all it's, right it's a fun way to okay to, have to, to the play with that a little bit later because yeah. if i start doing that now you won't hear from me again <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay so that's uh, that's your um local music and then you're going to, uh, out to ottawa? west coast to get ottawa first ottawa okay. and then montreal and then montreal. we're playing penticton nelson and vancouver Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what does the future hold? You've getting together, you've, you've done some songwriting or you will have done some songwriting at the end of it all. Yeah. Um, brought the band together, you know, get that cohesive uh, thing going. Yeah. And is there already new music for the next album after? There are some sort of uh, things that didn't quite make this record. So we might dust those things off and put them on another album. Um, I'm interested in 
and yeah, pursuing or like playing a little bit more um, as a band. Like I said, our my previous previous band, Future States, got to a point where we would write with you know specific sounds in mind that we knew that w existed in our band and um and it, we improvised a lot together and a lot of the music that we wrote um started to come from just hearing sounds in the rehearsal room so i'm hoping that we can do some of that um in the future and uh yeah there's definitely some things still s still up our sleeve I'd like personally, and this may be a surprise to the band, but I'd like to uh, kind of revisit the sound of Exit Strategy um, yeah. a little more with the full band in mind. Yeah. yeah, it's I don't know. There's a lot of energy in that album, and uh, and I I really I like I want to bring a fun fun live show to people. So um, that's what I'd like to see. Yeah. Yeah. How much audience participation do you get in your shows? Or I guess you haven't played together you know, as, as this find particular out. group. Guess find that out. Yeah. Um, in in previous bands, uh, we've Nick and I have have always tried to uh, to get people moving for sure, and that's the goal. Um, yeah, we were uh, kind of just at the point where people started to know our lyrics, uh, but uh, so I'd like to, to get good. back to that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's how it should be. Yeah. 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 And how about solo work? Have you done any solo performing around the area here? Yeah, actually, I've been I played a, a show that I've never done before, which is a improv piano set um, uh, with Pinch Cabaret, which is a, an event series um, run by Ben Ben G Ben, ben again G. with the names, <laughs> really horrible. You think I'm a teacher, but anyways. Um, yeah, Ben runs these amazing uh, cabaret series called Pinch Cabaret, um, and I performed there. It's out of the Button Factory lofts, and okay. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did some. I did perform there, uh, but I haven't done a lot of solo performing. I, it's not my favorite way to perform, um, but I'm I'm trying to get a little more out there, okay. a little more comfortable with that. Okay. Is there um, a pickup musician or two that you might want to perform with in the area here? Um, absolutely. Actually, I've been playing a little bit with Alison Corbett um, and uh, her partner Grady Kaplan, and mm -hmm. they. Alison has great tunes. So funny. She's from Newfoundland, um, and I think that uh, sense of humor comes through for sure. Um, yeah, it's been really great to play with her and Steve Aylward, um, who uh, runs teaches music locally. Um, he's a great drummer. Anyway, those guys are mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And so it would be. Dave's pickup band for Kitchener. Potentially, yeah. 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 Excellent. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You have, um, you've got about five minutes left. Okay. You have uh, one more thing to do for us? Sure. Let me think about that. Um, yeah, I'll play um, a song that uh, is a, coll a collaboration. I wrote the kind of second, the middle part, um, and Danielle wrote the lyrics to the the um first like the verse lyrics mm -hmm. and on the record danielle and i sing it together and I, if you listen on the record you'll see that there was some disagreement in one of our solution oh. our solution to this disagreement was to just sing different lyrics at the same time <laughs> all right <So. laughs> i think it actually enhances the uh the meaning of the lyrics like uh, uh the idea that yeah that what when somebody says one thing it can mean multiple things and anyway I think it's a it's an interesting interesting song. So it's called Great Sorrows. <laughs> Convictions 
now dancing in your house Unfolding the secret Turns out to be Persona non grata Lost memory Out of the flame And into the fire We, we marked our names Out on the funeral pyre Over the threshold And into the rain I I thought I'd never feel true comfort again By the grave of God we will carry on by the grace of God and carry great sorrows in the bosom of our chests Dave from Loontown live on CKMS FM Radio Waterloo that was pretty. I a little choked up there. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> you hit the, yeah, you, yeah. You, you hit the fields. Good. Yeah. It's a, a hopeful message, I think. Um, but it's been a tough time. I think that we have to re- like recognize that it's not been easy for a lot of people in the last few years. So. Yeah. 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 So I want to thank you very, very much for coming in. And hopefully... The next time we do this, uh, we'll be able to get some of the other band members in as well. For sure. We'll, yeah. we'll put them on earlier flights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, earlier flights. Or uh, there's a Friday afternoon episode as well. So okay. uh, yeah, we could uh, do it in the afternoon when people have had a chance to consume some coffee. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks so much for having us. You're very welcome. You've been listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. CKMS Community Connections is brought to you by Radio Waterloo. The executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Uh, associate producers are Jeff Steger, Dylan Bravener, and Steve Todd, who wrote our theme music. I have to get Steve Todd in at some point, too, and talk to him about the music that he's written. Today has been a wonderful day with Dave from Loontown, and there will be performances uh, tonight. Thursday and Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. So uh, those will all be up on uh, the website and you can see them there, radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc. See you next week. My name is Bob Jonkman. This has been CKMS Community Connections.